Hi, my name is Mayhem Star, and welcome back to Do Not Take This Cat Home. We are gonna play with the cat. <coughs> meow meow to you too. No, you just want a little attention, don't you? The poor thing must be bored sitting in that box all day. You're not sure you're much of an interesting companion, but you're willing to do your best. There's gotta be something you can entertain the little critter with. But what? Check pockets. You dig into your pockets. You find a small piece of string in your left pocket, not very helpful. The string is far too short. An eager and excited cat leaping forward could easily lead you to being bitten and scratched. In your right pocket is a bar of chocolate. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ooh. So we do remember what happened before. Very meta. Not too helpful either right now. Then again, we had the correct answer. This time around, we should just grab its neck and then shove chocolate down its throat and maybe it'll die of toxic poisoning. Anyway. Or we bash its head in with a baseball bat. Either one's fine. The only other thing you've got on you is your phone. Tart. There's not much of anything the cat can play with, but... There is something you can do. Oh, aren't you adorable? Photo montage. Tart. Well, that was fun, right? Well, you enjoyed yourself. With nothing else to do and no intention of taking the cat home, it decides it's probably best to just leave. You don't want the cat to get too attached after all. At least you'll have some memories to take with you. Okay, um, see you around I guess. Good luck. We know this isn't gonna turn out alright. Okay. You turn and walk away and- The phone? Your phone just got a message. You open it up and- Hmm? What? Aren't I cute? Aren't I cute? T-E You can't spell cute. You are lesser than me. It's a picture of a familiar looking cat. Huh? The cat does look cute. And happier in the picture. Hmm? But it's not a picture you recognize. What the heck? Did I... You didn't take this picture. You peek over your shoulder at the cat. Hmm? But the cat is simply looking at you. Meow to you too, you stupid cat. It mews sadly as if pleading you to come back. Hang out and do something else, get out of the alley. Get out of the alley, dot. You ignore the cat and briskly walk out of the alley without another look. Run! Run, buddy, run! Phew. That was weird. You're a good distance away when the phone rings. <coughs> Damn it. Not again. You reluctantly look at the new message and... Don't ignore me. Or, rather... Don't ignore me, crying face, dot. Creeped out, you decide to just go home. <coughs> hmm? I know you're seeing these. Oh, that's the cat's eye. That little symbol, that is. <coughs> Come back. Hmm? <coughs> Come back. Come back. <coughs> Come back. <coughs> Come back. Come play with me. And my teeth. Come back, come back, come back, come back. No, I do not wish to. I can see you. Can always see you. You can't hide. I'll always find you. You a woe? Okay. That's a free oh woe for you all. Your eyes dart around nervously, certain that you're being followed. But there's nothing there. There's nothing there, there's nothing to be found. You're finally home, but you feel too shaken for any relief to calm you down. Take your meds. You rush to the bathroom and slam the door behind you. Everything's okay. This isn't real. It's just like a bad dream. Everything's okay. You fumble in the dark to turn on the sink and splash your face with some cold water, hoping it will calm your mind and stop the hallucinations. Because that's all they are, right? Hallucinations. Don't hide away from reality. You're really regretting leaving home today. You must have been overworking yourself more than you realized. Yeah, that must be... Hmm? New message. You jump as your phone alerts you to yet another message received. 
Check phone, ignore phone, save. Uh, ooh, ignore phone. I wonder why we don't have a ringtone. The phone vibrates insistently over and over, but you just can't look. You keep your eyes squeezed shut, your fingers tightly grip the sink. In your mind, you beg whoever or whatever is doing this to just stop already. Please, 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 just put me out of my misery. You must do this quietly, you don't really mean it, you don't. But as the words take shape in the darkest corners of your mind, the phone immediately stops vibrating. You think that this would give you relief. Oh, I think the cat is a manifestation of our anxiety. Every mistake that we make, and the very guilt that we feel, is the cat messing with us. Hold on, let's see. I think we're gonna die here. But you only feel dread sinking heavily into your stomach. You can feel eyes on you. You can feel puffs of air on the back of your neck, damp and deep and slow. You take a deep breath and open your eyes and you look at the mirror. Nothing. You peek around the room. Still nothing. Nothing at all. You know that something is there, waiting to be acknowledged. For you to accept the fact of its existence, only then will it... Dane? Dine. Only then will it dine to give you peace. To free you from a life of constantly looking over your shoulder, of fearing your own image, your own reflection. You can feel its patience, limitless and old. You can't win against it in a war of attrition. Your lifespan will long expire before it tires of you. So... You close your eyes. And accept it. Hmm. As your head is severed from your neck, you're filled with peace, grateful that at the very least, you never had to see it, whatever it was. Ending 31 hit shot. Okay, so I suspect that this cat, whatever we imagine, whatever we feel really strongly about, this cat will make happen in the worst way possible. We are going to check phone. With shaking hands, you look at your phone. Hi, friend. Hello there. Beautiful teeth you have. Oh shit. What? Startled, you whirl around and instinctively jump back. You. Slip. Smashing the back of your head into the bathroom mirror. You don't register the pain just yet, your eyes shifting wildly around the room. There's nothing there. Nothing at all. You feel dizzy. You dazedly feel the back of your head and examine your hand. You can't really see anything, but it feels warm and wet. The smell of copper fills the air. The dizziness overwhelms you and you collapse in the bathroom tiles. Help. You reach for your phone to call an ambulance. The batteries are dead. Ending 30, Photobomber. We're gonna look around the area. You search around. But there's really nothing in the alley that looks interesting enough for the cat to play with. So maybe... How about a game? Meow. You decide on the game you've known since childhood. Red light, green light, a classic. Teaching a cat how to play might be a bit of a challenge. But you get the feeling that the feline's natural hunting instincts will help it along. Oh yes, after everything we've experienced thus far, its natural hunting instincts will definitely help it. You walk to the entrance of the alley, the cat meowing at you. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. You exaggerate your movements, covering your eyes with your hands and turn around. One, two, three. Peekaboo. Red light. You spin around. The cat hasn't left the box, tilting his head at you in curious confusion. Do not play dumb with me, stupid cat. Try something else, keep playing. Keep playing? You try again. This time you go a bit slower. One, two, three, red light. When you turn around this time, the cat is out of the box. Oh yes, it's out of the box all right. It's definitely no longer a secret. It's coming for you. The cat freezes under your stare as if it thinks you can't see it if it doesn't move. So cute. Oh wow, so kawaii. So stupid, so naive. Satisfied that the cat is getting the hang of the game, you turn again. Speeding back up. One, two, three, red light. 
Matthew turn around. The cat is a few steps away from the box now, peeking out from behind the dumpster, its eyes trained rather intensely on you. Well, at least it's having fun. You turn again, and you feel a sudden chill run down your spine. This is all your own fault. Hmm. You feel silly, but you can't help counting just a little faster this time. One, two, three, red light. Rolling around after saying red light, you look at the cat. It's halfway down the alley closer to you now, but it's as if the perspective of what you're seeing is off somehow. Doesn't the cat look a little bigger? Its pupils are thin slits now. Something, something's not right. The cat meows at you again, but it sounds much deeper than earlier. It's crouched down as if poised to lunge forward. Your breath shudders a little as your heart starts to race. Your foot instinctively shifts back. Oh boy. You freeze immediately. The cat looks impatient. It, it wants to keep playing, but... You gulp and turn around, swiftly counting and turning again as you gasp out. Uh, one, two, three, red light. Crash? The ground shakes as you whirl back around. You find yourself staring at a long surface of black fur. You slowly look up, and up, and up. You see a giant, shadowy figure leering down from its position hunched over you. Ha! Huh. So once you come out of your box, now you show your true form. An evil thing. Fangs dripping with saliva, claws crushing into the concrete walls of the alley. Its glowing eyes are unblinking as they look back at you. The cat waiting for your next turn, but it's so close. If you turn around now, you, you don't want to play anymore. Of course we don't. Back up, run. And we did. You don't even finish turning around before the claws grip your torso, digging in and piercing the soft flesh of your stomach with ease, as you're lifted into the drooling, gaping jaws above you. You can't help but think that there must have been another way out of this, but pointless regrets are pretty typical for you, aren't they? Ending 32, Fear Quitter. Back up. What do you mean by back up? Oh, okay, we're looking at the cat and we're walking backwards, okay. Keeping your eyes trained on the giant looming over you, you take a step back. No. That's cheating. Run restore backup.exe. What's this? Run backup. Begin. Can I type in this? No, I can't. Begin restoration. E. D. H. B. A. C. K. Back. Up. Restoration complete. What are you doing? What am I doing? I don't know. Stop. You'll break everything. Back up. The cat stares as you keep eye contact and back up. Oh, it can't chase us. Because we have eye contact on it. And once we leave the alley, it can't get us. Uh-huh. You step back. And back. And as you take one more step back out of the alley, dot, go home. Error. Error? Error. Hmm. The world outside the alley seems to be broken. What exactly did you do? Ending 33, error found. Uh-huh. Buy a toy. After being out in this alley all alone for who knows how long, you personally think your furry friend deserves something special. You'll be... Oh, sorry, I'll be right back, okay? <coughs> Meow. Meow? You quickly leave the alley and rush to the nearby pet store. You browse through all the different toys for cats. There are so many to choose from, plush and bright colored and scented with catnip. But you realize that most of the toys aren't meant for a cat to play with alone. You can't stay in the alley playing forever, and you can't exactly afford to get another cat as a playmate. Another. That's it. You know exactly what to get now. Another human. Get another person to take your place. After a quick and successful search in the store, you find a child to offer to the demon lord. You make your purchase and rush back to the alley, eager to show off your find. 
I'm back. Meow. Meow to you too, stupid cat. The alley feels even gloomier after spending time in direct sunlight. It makes you feel that much prouder of your gift. You skip over to the cat and dig in the store's plastic bag. I've got something for you. Meow. The cat leans up, curious at the bag's contents. You pull out your gift to the cat. Ta-da! It's a small cat plushie. The plushie is a light orange cream color with a burnt sapia stripe, making it resemble a tabby cat. The synthetic fur is soft, but not unrealistically so. And the large eyes are a pale green, more subdued than you would have expected for a toy. There's no denying it's just a plushie, but the thoughtful details still make it almost uncanny to the real thing. Really. Which makes it perfect. I'm pretty sure we've seen a tabby cat somewhere else in this playthrough. A companion for the cat. And one you could easily afford. Win-win. Yeah, that's not all. You give the plushie a little squeeze and... Meow. It meows back. Meow. The cat looks unimpressed. Huh, well, I think it's cute. You think it's cute. Guess your purchase wasn't so successful after all. Out of options and lower on cash, you awkwardly place the plushie in the box next to the cat. You get up and turn to leave. You're a few steps away when you hear an electronic meow behind you. Meow. Is the cat doll alive? It better not be alive, huh? You turn to see the plushie on the ground next to the box. The cat is watching you closely, staring. Alright you stupid cat, I've offered you everything you could possibly want. Actually, not really. I haven't given you fame and fortune. But how about I pick up the plushie? You sigh and go over to pick up the stuffed toy. You really do just want attention, don't you? <coughs> meow, meow. Yes, yes, you love attention, yes. You hold up the cat doll, examining it a little. Hmm? It looks a little different. Oh, it, it's alive. Oh, shit. Did it just... Look at you. Meow. It's gonna jump scare us. Here we go. Get ready. Bam! In our face. Meow. No. 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 What the fuck? Chomp. I did not anticipate that. Oh, wow. The plushie somehow opens its sewn up mouth before biting into your wrist. Ow, stop. You try to fling it off, but its grip on you is strong as it drinks your blood, ravenous and frantic. You hit it against the concrete walls of the alley. You try to tear at its sturdy fabric. But try as you might, you can't seem to hurt it or make it stop. It's just a toy after all. Eventually, you start to feel faint. Enough to collapse your knees in defeat. The stuffed doll is drinking more calmly now. As if his previous aggression had been a mere reaction to your desperation. It seems satisfied that you're no longer able to put up a fight. Hmm. You think you blacked out for a second. Because though you're still sitting, the next time you're conscious, your eyes are closed. You feel so weak. You have to use all your strength just to pry open your eyes, and when you do... Hmm. You see a... You see a kitten. It's fur, a familiar orange cream with burnt sapia stripes. It's lapping at your wrist. The kitten lifts its head and looks at you with piercing pale green eyes. Near to you too, you stupid cat. Just wait till I squeeze your head. It mules at you with a high squeaky pitch, mouth covered in blood. It'd be downright adorable if you weren't about to die from blood loss. Jump scare. Oh, oh, you're cute. Oh, so adorable. You picked up the kitten. It's your kitten now. Oh. The cat strolls into your line of vision and picks the kitten up. It gives you an indecipherable look before turning away. The cat carries the kitten back to the box and starts to carefully and dutifully clean it. Her. Oh, you just wanted a companion. You sway and find you can't right yourself before falling to the ground. It would seem that in the end, you got gotten the cat a playmate after all. Ending 34, Living Doll. Well, at least it's happy, yes? Leave. Ungrateful little monster. You huff in annoyance. 
You're welcome. Shaking your head, you turn to leave once again. Hmm. Ah, when a sharp pain lances up your arm. Ah, what? Crying out, you grab at your arm only for it to... Fall off? Huh. Oh, we've been turned into a plushie. Your arm just falls right off. You stare in shock at the severed limb on the ground. Gathering your courage, you turn to look at where your arm had once connected to the rest of you only to see... Huh? Not blood, it's... It's cotton? We're 100% cotton, Egyptian cotton. We're the high quality shit. Touching it, the stump doesn't even hurt. That is... Huh? Until the same thing happens to your other arm. Huh? Ah! We're being torn apart. You fall when both your legs succumb to the same nonsensical fate, crying out at the agony that comes and goes like it never happened, as if you're not currently laying on the dirty ground of an alley, limbless, or a potato. What in the world is going on? You can't make sense of it. You can't think straight. Huh? Hmm. The pain has receded, leaving you with a strangely empty pit in your stomach, considering you still have a stomach, and it wasn't replaced with... Well, cotton. As you lay back, helpless, and still in shock, staring at the sky, the cat's face appears in your line of vision. Oh, so adorable. This is the last thing we get to see is the cat's stupid face. Ryan <coughs> did. It lunges at your torso and starts biting and clawing into your chest like a chew toy. It doesn't hurt anymore. You feel like it should. You're not sure if you're glad that it doesn't. But... Eventually, you feel the cat pull something out of you. A small doll that looks very, very familiar. It's hard to tell, but that doll is... That's you, isn't it? That's our soul! Have you harvested our soul? The cat hops off you and heads back to the box with its prize. At least you think so. And everything's too dark to tell. You wake up and find that you can't move an inch. You can't look around. You can't even breathe. Though none of those realizations seem to be a problem. All you can see is the face of a familiar looking cat curled around you, purring in its sleep. For some reason, this doesn't bother you. Let's have a look. Oh, it's so cute and adorable. It's with us. We can see our two feet. And this stupid small little tabby cat and this stupid black cat. You're not sure why you feel it should. You try to latch onto thoughts in your head that feel like memories of another life, another time, another you. But the thoughts slip away like forgotten dreams. Oh no. Oh well. That's fine, isn't it? You're just a doll, after all. And a doll's role isn't to have silly thoughts or to remember unimportant things, but to be a companion. Purr. And judging from the cat's content purring, you seem to be performing your role perfectly. You are filled with an overwhelmingly strong sense of pride at this fact. And so you too feel content. Ending 35, Cotton Headed. Oh, that's so cute. We are now one with the cat forever. We are going to take the cat home. Meow. Well, why not? Right? Meow to you too, you stupid cat. You barely reach out your arms before the cat eagerly leaps into them and climbs onto your shoulders. It butts its head into your temple, nuzzling against it. Purr purr purr, you stupid cat. <laughs> You can't help but smile at the cat's enthusiasm. Let's get you out of here, yeah? On your way home, you briefly consider getting cat food. But that would be a waste of time. Hmm? Oh, because the prologue. Okay. You shrug at the odd feeling and move on. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. One you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long, even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you wait for it to walk away and explore the new environment. But it simply sits and looks up at you expectedly. Save. Well, we do know that the cat wants attention, don't we? Do something with the cat. Like what? Uh, let's... Pet the cat. 
It's not every day you have access to a cute fluffy animal. What else is there to do but pet it to your heart's content? You sit on the floor in your living room and click your tongue to call the cat over. Hmm? Oh, it's happy. The cat dashes over to you, immediately climbing into your lap. Poor thing. You just want some attention, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> alright, alright. You carefully pet the cat. A rub behind the ear, a scratch under the chin, a smooth sweep along the back. Heh, <laughs> good. You keep petting the cat in your lap, enjoying this bonding time together. Enjoy it while you can. But the cat starts to get restless after a while. Heh heh heh. Oh ho 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 ho. Hee hee You stupid cat. Keep petting. You're not quite ready to stop. You feel so calm. The repetitive action soothing your usually overworking mind. You keep petting. Yes, that's right, cat. Let me torment you. Torment you some more. The cat leans away from your next head pat. It's trying to get out of your lap. <laughs> Keep petting. When you scratch under the cat's chin, it bites at your fingers. You might be bleeding, but really it barely hurts. More of a warning than anything. And the cat struggles in your hole. It's watching you closely. <laughs> ah, is this the only time we get to really torture you, you stupid cat? Keep petting. You keep petting the cat. That's right. My suffering does not matter as long as you are uncomfortable. Hmm. The cat bites off your finger. It hurts. You're definitely bleeding now, but for some reason, you just can't stop. You don't know what it is. Its fur is so much softer than you realize. You think that it would be shining in the faint light of your living room, but it's as if the darkness of the cat's black coat is sucking in all the illumination around it, rendering it completely null. You're drawn to it, like you're somehow holding a deep dark abyss right in your lap. Its fur must be so black, like absolute black, that it absorbs all the light and you can't see it, it doesn't reflect anything. That's cool. It seems calmer now, munching on your severed finger. The stump between your thumb and middle finger is leaking. But you keep petting. You fret that your blood will ruin its fur, but the cat no longer seems to mind. Time passes. It's dark out now. Soft as the fur is, your palm has started to feel raw and damp under the constant friction from your petting. You think, faintly, that maybe you've had enough. You start to lift your hand from the cat, when in a flash... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> My suffering does not matter. Your entire hand is separated from your wrist. It flops onto your lap beside the cat. The cat's claws on its front right paw glisten with crimson liquid. You don't feel it for a moment, but your body tenses, anticipating the pain as you blankly watch the cat lick at the bloody palm of your severed hand. Ha! <laughs> it hurts. It really, really hurts. Then, the cat looks up at you and you... Feel compelled to keep petting. Oh yeah! You're reluctant, but you're also afraid of what will happen if you don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you try to resist again? You were hurt for your insistent petting earlier, yet now you've been hurt for trying to stop. It defies all logic, but that's what scares you. There's no reasoning with such fickle whims. You feebly try to raise your uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens, golden eyes glinting dangerously. Well, alright then. You raise your bleeding stump and resume your petting to the best of your ability. That's right, cat. You pet. And you bleed. You pet. And you bleed, you pet. And you bleed, you pet and... You. Ending 7, Personal Boundaries. Feed the cat. The cat looks hungry, so you decide to feed it. You're regretting not stopping for food earlier as you don't have much left. Grocery shopping day is tomorrow after all. You head to the kitchen and click your tongue, ensuring the cat follows after you. It leaps nimbly onto the kitchen counter and watches as you search for meal options. Hmm, let's see. You find some things you expect. A can of tuna in the pantry. Some leftover meatloaf in the fridge. 
and what is that? Huh, what's that? You realize there's tightly sealed Tupperware on the bottom shelf of the fridge. Hmm? You don't recognize it. The foul odor is leaking from the container, it's flesh. It's our flesh from a previous timeline. Whatever's inside can't be safe for human consumption. Uh. But the cat seems excited about it, practically salivating over it. Hmm? Still, you're the one who needs to decide what's best to feed a hungry cat. So you'll feed it. Let's start with feeding tuna. Cats like fish, right? Shrugging, you take out the tuna for the cat and the meatloaf for yourself. You put the frankly ominous container back in the fridge. The cat looks a little disappointed. Tough. You'll need to dispose of that weird whatever it is later. You open the tuna and spoon it into a small saucer. You put the sauce on the kitchen counter next to the cat. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there. But you figure it'll make up for electing not to feed it the toxic goop it wanted. The cat looks like it finds the tuna. Acceptable. You'll take it. Eat up, kitty. As the cat digs into its meal, you go about heating up the meatloaf in the microwave. While setting the time, you hear... You turn and see that the plate is completely empty. Whoa, that was quick. You need to pace yourself. Is it gonna throw up? What the? You watch baffled as the cat continues to hiccup, causing... Bubbles? Little bubbles to float out of its mouth. Okay. That's okay. You can... You can process this. It's not completely out of the realm of what's possible, right? That was completely crazy. Take your meds. Right. Best not to think too hard about it. Soon enough, the room is full of the floating bubbles. The cat releases a final, tiny bubble before yawning and laying down right there on the counter. Well, glad you enjoyed it. The bubbles haven't left the room or popped. They seem to be pretty resilient. Hmm? Wait, what? What's that? As one of the bubbles floats closer to you, you see that there's actually something inside it. A tiny, furry... fish? This is just getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, yeah it is. All the endings and everything we've seen thus far? This is just fucking weird. Still, you can't help but marvel at the impossible wonder in front of you. You lift a hand. Is it a catfish? You extend a finger towards the bubble. Carefully press it against the surface. Oh, yep, it bit us. The little fish inside lashes out, viciously sinking tiny fangs into your finger. It doesn't really hurt that much at first, but then... Ah, ow, what? Pain starts to climb from your finger to the rest of your hand, past your wrist. Could it be some kind of venom? You fling your arm around in an attempt to dislodge the fish, but... You pop more bubbles in the meantime. Uh-oh. Ah, you accidentally knock your arm into several of the bubbles floating around. More tiny, ravenous fish latch onto your flesh. You stumble back out of pain in a sudden bout of dizziness, only to bump into more bubbles, more fish digging their teeth into your back. Huh? It hurts. You're getting dizzy. You've got to... get out. You deliriously try to stumble out of the kitchen, but the entire room is filled with diddly bubbles. Surprisingly enough, you keep dying from blood loss. By the time you collapse to the ground, you're completely covered in tiny, angry, biting fish. Your legs, your torso, your arms, your face. The pain is unbearable. You can feel it in your skin, in your teeth, in your eyes, in your hair, and, and it's so consuming you can't even feel yourself convulsing or crying. You don't black out. Your eyes are still rolling up into your skull when you gasp out your last breath. Ending 8, fish out of water. Stupid cat. Meatloaf. You get the feeling the cat won't be too impressed with anything that comes out of the can. And you're not about to feed it whatever the heck that toxic looking sludge is. So it's settled, a tuna sandwich for you and leftover meatloaf for your feline guest. You ignore the cat's disappointed meows as you put the weird container back in the fridge to dispose of later. You warm up the meatloaf in the microwave. You place the now warm meatloaf on a saucer next to the cat on the counter. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there, but you figure it'll make up for electing not to feed it the toxic goop it wanted. Meow. The cat looks like it finds the meatloaf. Interesting. Meh, works for you. Eat up, kitty. What are you gonna do this time? 
As the cat digs into its meal, you go about searching for some bread for your tuna sandwich. You're so distracted by your search that you only just barely hear. Splat? Hmm? You turn around and see that the meatloaf has only one, maybe two bites taken out of it. But more alarmingly, there seems to be a red trail of something leading away from where the cat has been sitting and off the edge of the counter towards the living room is... Is that blood? Okay, cat. If you have spawned something living, we're gonna bash your head in. You jump at the strange sound coming from around the corner, further into your apartment. You attempt to steal your nerves. Taking a breath, you walk around the corner to head into the living room. Splat. Huh? You step into something warm and wet and red. You resist the urge to vomit and step away from the trail of... of... You follow the trail into the living room and see that it leads into the hall. Hmm? It's getting louder. It's definitely in the hall. You feel like you can hear your heartbeat. You hope whatever is in the hall can't. Your body shakes as you feel yourself step forward. And forward. And forward. And forward. You peek around the corner, Rainbow Six Siege style. Hmm. Nothing. There's nothing there. What? You walk further into the hall and see that the trail leads all the way down the end of it, but there's nothing there. You don't quite feel relief, but at least... Flop? You feel something wet and warm drip onto your cheek. It's on the ceiling. Something very warm. You swipe your shaking hand across it and pull it back to see your fingers covered in... something. Oh, nice, the cat is a very carnivorous being, isn't it? It loves to grow big, stick to ceilings, crush walls. Hmm. You look up and see what can only be described as meat. The entire ceiling of the hallway is covered in a thick, undulating, writhing layer of pulsing meat. What the hell? At the center is a single glowing eyeball, frantically rolling around in every direction. Is that the cat? Until it lands squarely on you. If this is your fate, you stupid cat, I wouldn't mind dying. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. You try to take a step back, desperately to escape the hallway. To escape this thing, but... Huh? Before you can even scream, meaty tendrils shoot out and grab you. No, let me go. They pull you up and up, and into its gaping jaws, into a pair of slowly opening jaws, and then... Chomp. Ending 9 Leftovers Oh boy oh boy, do I love being fed on. Load? Hey, I click load, what's happening now? Hello? Can I help you? Do you want to say something? You gonna jump scare me? Huh, what's that? It happened before, this little like bright shining light. In the days leading up to my meeting with it, I'd been obsessed with a memory. Someone precious to me had found someone precious to them. Hmm? My best friend. My only friend. I was happy for them, truly. But then I'd be happy for the others too. They promised it wouldn't happen to me again. That they knew how it felt to be told by someone you cared for that they'd outgrown you and your friendship. That they never, ever do such a thing to me. There's not a moment that passes now that I wish I'd taken the pain of their rejection. And just believe them. But I didn't. I pulled away before they could trying to protect my fragile heart. But it only hurt all the more. Selfish as it was, I'd wanted them to fight harder to keep me around. When it appeared before me, it promised to be just that. A friend that would never, ever, let me go. A friend that would never, ever, leave me. And all I had to do was promised the same thing in return.
Is that what the cat is? Dot. You're walking, right? Of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out, and you're actually glad that you did. Weather good today. Weather. Weather good today. The weather is good today. Interesting. That good thing. Maybe good luck too. Yes, lucky. Lucky, 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 lucky. Lucky, 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 lucky. Hmm. Or maybe it was fate. Hmm. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do, maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. Okay, we're back to here again. How about we do something alone? Like what? Um, yeah, let's clean the apartment. You decide that even if it's your day off, that doesn't mean you should be completely unproductive. You know you have a guest and all, but you really shouldn't put off your chores. Best to get them done while you're in the mood to do so. So, for now, you get dressed, roll up your sleeves and get to work on cleaning the apartment. At least, you try to. You sweep the living room. You wipe the kitchen counter. You... Okay, you don't make your bid, but who actually does that anyway? Me, I do. Still, I'm a bit too normie. You think that no matter how much you clean up, you keep finding more messes than when you started. You peek over at the cat. You suspect that it might be the culprit behind this mystery, but every time you rush a check on it or catch it in the act, it's sleeping. You always find it napping in the living room. Hmm. You keep cleaning, but the cat, or something, keeps leaving more and more mess in its way. Let's keep cleaning. You keep cleaning, but there's just more mess, and more, and more. When you finally stop and look around you, is everything trashed? You don't even recognize your home anymore. There's piles of junk everywhere. Do you even own this much stuff? I mean, if you threw everything out of the cabinets, you might be a hoarder. You could be a hoarder, who knows? You don't remember ever buying or receiving most of it. The piles tower over you. You feel claustrophobic. The stench of garbage is overwhelming despite your hands feeling raw from all the cleaner fluid you've been using. Bleach? Your eyes still burn from the bleach. Yeah, the bleach. You need some air. You need to get out of here. Hmm. You hear a smash and see a teacup you're certain you don't own smashed on the floor. You look up and see the cat perched on a teetering pile of china and kitchen appliances. It carefully nudges another teacup from the pile, sending it careening to the ground. But you don't even flinch as it shatters. Instead, heh, you start to chuckle. <laughs> Suddenly you're laughing, it's so hilarious. Well, doing the same thing over and over again is insanity, and that might just be us. <laughs> That tears start running down our face. I knew it. It was you. You did this, didn't you? You pick up the largest piece of ceramic from the broken teacups. Didn't you? And throw it at the cat. Oh, good throw. Hit it. Did you hit it? Damn it. The cat dodges by leaping up the pile. The pile sways. And falls on us? It sways. It's falling. Onto us. Yay. It's falling towards you. You can't move. You're buried. The pile fell on top of you. Broken shards of fine china and sharp utensils are piercing your skin, your organs. Your bones feel loose and limp, crushed under heavy appliances. Warm liquid pools under you. With the loss of your strength, you listen as the cat pads over to you before lying down and purring sleepily. Yeah, a nap sounds pretty good. Ending 1, a not so clean getaway. Let's catch the cat in the act. How are we supposed to finish cleaning up if this little imp is making a menace of itself? No, you know the cat's the culprit. You consider locking it up in the bathroom at least until you clean the rest of the apartment, but it doesn't seem fair when you actually don't have any proof. You need to investigate this further. You need proof. Not just for the sake of your sanity, but more importantly, for the sake 
of cleanliness, like me. You start to clean again and peek behind you, catching mere glimpses of a pool here or a tail there. But as with earlier, when you rush back to the living room, the cat is still sleeping. Okay, you wanna play, cat? Then let's play. This time, you decide to lay a trap, one your feline friend won't be able to resist. You tackle the kitchen island counter and give it the works. What do you mean? It's glistening by the time you're done. It's so clean. You dropkick anyone who even thought of eating off of it. The perfect trap for your little cleaning saboteur. You whistle innocently as you exit the room and hide around the corner of the entryway to the hall. From the angle you're at, you have the perfect view of the cat in the island counter. There's no way you won't catch the culprit in the act now. If it really isn't the cat, maybe you'll give it a treat as an apology for your suspicions? Maybe. But as you deliberate if you should stop by the grocery store to get some fish, the cat starts to... Shift. Its back that was rising and falling evenly moments ago is now rippling in small tremors like an agitated wave on a black sea. It's shuddering. It's bubbling. It's bulging. Huh? What? What the hell? You gape in disbelief as another cat bursts out of the still, still sleeping feline you've taken home with you. You're fairly certain that's not how cats give birth. Mitosis? But more importantly, you watch Cat 2 shake itself off before leaping up onto the counter, rolling on top of it and leaving fur and grime in its wake. Hmm, probably should have given it a bath earlier. You feel like your mind is lagging behind the reality of the discovery you've just made. But you don't seem capable of thinking beyond smaller observations, for example. Though the hows and whys of what you're witnessing elude you, the more pertinent question that strikes you is that if the original cat is still sleeping, and the clone cat is busy making yet another mess, there's another one? Then where are all the other clones? Mm -hmm. Whoa, what? Suddenly, two black cats look directly at you in perfect unison. Oh, both of them do, okay. Their eyes pin you to the spot with their intensity. But you realize with the familiar sinking feeling of being watched from behind that they're not the only ones looking at you. You slowly turn around. Whoa. Packed in the hall behind you from the floor to the ceiling is a living, breathing, writhing wall of cats, of clones, all piled on top of each other. The glowing golden eyes of every cat in the undulating wall of pure black fur. Every single eye is trained on you. Out of fear and a sheer desperate need to distance yourself from this blight on reality and order, you take a single step back. And in response, the wall just breaks. And then they scurry out like spiders, all those animals that like to gather together and disperse in sight of a predator. Oh, and they attack us. And the cats all stampeding over you. It'd be kind of cute. Hmm? If their soft paws weren't hiding claws as sharp as knives, yeah, I figured. I was about to say, you tried to protect yourself. But there's just too many of them. Blood leaks steadily from your scratches. You feel dizzy. We're always bleeding out. I think I said that before, but we're always bleeding out, aren't we? Or getting our head chopped off. You turn your head and watch as the cats tear through carpet and upholstery. Knock over vases and dishes and lamps. We have a lot of stuff. Flow at the walls. It's gonna take forever to clean this up, you think. Maybe you'll tackle it all again later, if you live. Right after you. Take a short nap. With an annoyed sigh, you breathe your last breath. Ending to double trouble. Okay, I guess we did. Let's watch a movie. You're not tired enough for a nap, but you're too lazy to get started on any of your chores. So you decide to watch a movie. You get dressed in your favorite pajamas, make some popcorn with an obscene amount of butter, and head over to your favorite armchair. Or rather, I would much rather sugar. I like sugar with my popcorn. Only to discover that the cat is already napping in it. You frown a little in thought. 
The couch isn't at the best angle for optimal TV viewing pleasure, and you don't feel like pushing it around and having to put it back later. The only options for you left are to sit on the floor, or move the cat and reclaim the throne. Reclaim my throne. You square your shoulders. Alright cat, I'm gonna box you. If you don't dodge, it's gonna hit your face. Sorry kitty, but that's my spot. You pick up the cat and place it on the floor. Too bad, so sad. It's clearly upset with you when you try to pet it as an apology, it dodges your hand and scampers away. You shrug and put on a random movie before nestling into your chair. It's some horror film that you love to heckle from beginning to end. What if the cat crawled out of the TV all ring style or ringu style? Nothing but an endless string of pointless jump scares. Do the writers not know the meaning of the word subtle? You're gonna jump scare me now. Hmm? What was that? Was that the bathroom? The cat must have gotten into the medicine cabinet or knocked something over. Calming your thundering heart with a deep breath, you pause the movie and get up to investigate. Meow to you too, you stupid cat. Whoa. The cat dashes between your legs from the hall. Fleeing the scene only makes you look guiltier, you know. You're even more reluctant to see the damage now. You just want to relax and watch your bad horror movie. You go into the bathroom and turn on the light. Just as you thought, all the stuff in your medicine cabinet is stattered all over the tiles. You sigh. At least none of it looks broken or damaged. Crouch down and pick everything up. Click? Huh. Did the door just close? Did you bump it when you crouched down or... <laughs> well, at least the cat can come in and make more of a mess this way. Hmm? The lights. Didn't you just replace the bulbs? They weren't faulty, were they? You never remember to hold on to your receipts for situations like this. You doubt you'll be able to get your money back. Jump scare time. You stand up. You shake out the pain in your knees from crouching and open your medicine cabinet. Carefully, you place everything back where they belong, making sure nothing is missing. You close the cabinet door and... Jump scare, ah! You jump back, slamming against the wall, covering your mouth. You look back up at the mirror on the medicine cabinet door to see... Nothing. Nothing? What, what the hell? Something. Something was... You know you saw something just now. You know you did. Right? We saw something and definitely saw something. What's the difference? You definitely saw something. Well, okay, there we go. Ah! Uh, you rush out of the bathroom and slam the door behind you without looking. You enter the hall and... No. No, 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 no. You shield yourself with your arms and... Nothing. Nothing again. You peek through your fingers and see... Just your usual hallway. You. You don't feel very good. You need to sit down. You carefully make your way back to the dark living room. Try not to overwhelm your senses any more than you already have. Maybe you should watch something a little more light-hearted. Or just lie down instead. You don't know. It's a little hard to think. You just need to sit down. Stumbling forward, you reach your chair. But... Hmm? Okay, cat. It's nothing. It's nothing at all. Just a cat, sitting back in your chair again, looking up at you curiously. <coughs> Meow? I'm going to sit on you, and my butt imprint will be on your face forever. There'll be one butt cheek per eye. Cat. Huh? But it's enough. Your heart lurched so harshly out of a mixture of fear and anticipation that it completely gives out. Your eyes roll up into your skull. You feel yourself falling back. Did we just die of a heart attack? Not. You're dead before you even hit the ground. Ending four. Real subtle. Thanks. You definitely saw something. Okay, there we go. I don't think it makes a difference, does it? Let's try. Nope, no difference. It's ending four nonetheless. Sit on the floor. You decide to sit on the floor. The cat is a guest after all, and you pride yourself on being a good host if nothing else. Well, at least you would if you had any guest over before. You grab a blanket and some pillows and make a comfy nest in front of your chair. That's cute. You pop in a random movie from your collection and can tell instantly that it's one of your favorite horror films. You've seen it a few times already, but it never fails to get your blood pumping. A few minutes in and you're already invested getting reacquainted with the story and characters. The scares won't come until later, but... 
For some reason, you feel like something is watching you from behind. The cat? You know it's probably nothing, but you feel compelled to check anyway. You peek over your shoulder. Ugh. Only to jump out of your skin, jostling a few pieces of popcorn out of the bowl in your lap. The cat is awake and looking at you. Hello, cat. You take a calming breath, recovering from your heart nearly lurching out of your chest and immediately feeling foolish. It was just the cat, of course. It was so quiet you forgot it was right behind you, even though it's the whole reason you're sitting on the floor in the first place. What you should do is grab onto it, right by the neck, and then have it sit in your lap, so if it does anything you just squeeze. You shakily pick up the remote, intending to rewind some of the parts you missed. However, as soon as you press the rewind button, hmm, the TV shuts off. You blink, confused. Nothing else turned off. The kitchen's dim light was still on. The digital clock was still glowing and the movie player was still rewinding. The power clearly didn't go out, so why? You feel a chill run down your spine as you catch the cat's reflection in the dark TV screen. It's still looking at you. Cats stare, silly. It's kind of their thing, right? And you're a new addition in its life. Of course it's going to study you closely to see if you're trustworthy. As you mentally reassure yourself, you turn the TV back on. Hmm? What? The TV's on, but the movie isn't playing on screen. It's... What is that? It's you. You watch yourself from... Oh, it is a... Oh, it's not really us, is it? We're not that ugly. You watch yourself fr frown on screen? Oh. You watch yourself frown on screen as you feel your brow furrow in tandem. It's like footage of you in real time, like you're being recorded. You feel the familiar sensation of your mind focusing on small details to avoid the bigger picture of your current situation, avoiding the questions of how this is happening, of who or what is doing this, and why. Suddenly, your mirrored self smiles and waves at you, all on its own. You don't wave back, too stunned to move. The you on screen didn't seem to mind, though. It then stands up. It walks out of frame. And... Ugh! A terrified yell rips out of your mouth before you can think to stifle it. It's right there, it's right next to us. Our... Doppelganger? Doppel? Our clone? Is right next to us. On screen in the chair is the cat. But it's wrong. It's become a large, swollen mass of black fur. Its twitching pulse are rhythmical with its slow, almost methodical breaths. Its mouth is a yawning entrance to a dark abyss framed by a set of teeth that look very, very sharp. Glowing eyes bulge all over its body. It's still looking at you. It doesn't even acknowledge your on-screen persona as they walk back into frame and pet it almost lovingly. Then, you inside the TV touches one of the cat's fangs. Hmm? Oh! Whatever it does, injures us. You flinch at a sudden sharp pain in your palm. You look down and sure enough, your hand is bleeding. You're not particularly afraid of blood, but for some reason the sight of it leaking out of you sends another chill down your back. A thought, clear and terrible, flashes across your mind. It's not just the mutated cat in the TV that's watching you, is it? Don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. Do it. Look behind you. You watch helplessly as your on-screen self smiles and nods at you, almost encouragingly. They stand in front of the cat's gaping jaws. They look into the dark depths, and as you're torn between the horrifying realization of what's about to happen, and the gripping wonder of what they see looking back at them from that deep, deep darkness, is the darkness staring back at them? They jump in. Okay. Darkness is a sudden presence all around you, pressing in, holding you down, and yet you somehow feel weightless. You can't tell if you're falling, but it doesn't feel like you're laying down or standing either. You feel warm. You feel cold. You're being bored. Freak out now. You feel everything. You feel nothing. You feel nothing. Ending 3 Silent Film Do something alone. Like what? I don't know, take a nap? You're a little tired from the events of the day. Making life-changing choices like committing to the responsibility of caring for another living creature really wears you out. You could definitely use a nap. You head to your room and get dressed in your pajamas before you decide to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. You head back to your bedroom, ready for a much needed nap. Meow? Whoa. 
only for the cat to race past you through the open door and jump on the middle of the bed. You annoying cat. I will lie on top of you, smother you, till you can't breathe and you die right there, and I'll stay on top of you till you become a black stain on the bed sheets. It takes its time kneading at the sheets before settling down and closing its eyes. Purr purr purr, yes, stupid. Well, that was fast. You frowned thoughtfully. Now that your mind's on it, you find yourself really craving a nap in your own bed. There's no way you're settling for sleeping on the couch, certainly not the armchair, which means you should... Kill the cat. We have to eventually kill the cat, I swear. Let me do something else. You can try napping later, you decide to do something else in your time. Okay, no. Let's, uh, move the cat. You tentatively nudge the cat in an attempt to make it move on its own. It doesn't budge in the slightest. Uh, what happens if I click on second thought? Nope, move the cat. Doesn't budge in the slightest. Keep trying, this is your bid. I'm the king of this house. You push a little more firmly this time. Meow to you too, you stupid cat. The cat sounds annoyed with you. Move the cat. I don't know, it sounds mad. What happens if I click that? Dot. Goes back. Move the cat. Okay. Keep trying. Don't meow me. Again, you will sleep in your own bed. Yes, this is my bed, cat. It's mine, not yours. The cat opens one yellow eye and slides it up to look at you. Mm-hmm. I'm fighting you right here, right now. I'm the human. I have thumbs, you don't. Is his voice a little deeper than before? Move the cat. Seriously, last chance. You really want to do this? Yeah. Uh, actually, let's try what happens if I click this, dot. Okay, move the cat. Move. The. Cat. Damn right we will. You move forward. And we grab it by its tail and fling it across the room and it hits the wall and goes Pfft. Rage, you shove the cat with all your might. Crash, huh? You throw him back by some invisible force and crash into the dresser before falling to the ground. Ugh. Wind knocked out of you, you look up in a daze. Hm? You. You don't quite comprehend what you're seeing. A strong, swirling wind has picked up, throwing items all over the place as if a miniature hurricane had just taken form in your room, and right there in the center of it all, is the cat. It's an esper. Hovering in the air above your bed, its eyes open glowing like molten lava. <laughs> no, you sound like my phone. <laughs> it's a demon from hell. You watch as the vortex drips open in the center of your bed, and panic as the swirling wind turns into a vacuum, dragging you towards the bed. Ugh. Your nails catch and tear as you desperately try to cling to the carpet, the floorboards, any and every piece of furniture within your reach, bloody fingers slipping clumsily on every surface. But there's nothing you can do. As you touch the vortex, your body starts to disintegrate, tiny particles of your body separating and floating into nothing. The last thing you see is the cat landing nimbly on the bed and kneading at your sheets before it curls up and falls back to sleep. Ending 5, do not disturb. Let's uh, let's sleep next to the cat. You shrug. What's the harm in sharing the bid, right? You both had a long day after all. You try to carefully avoid jostling the cat as you lay down, but it immediately scoots over and curls up against you anyway. Purr purr purr. Mm -hmm. You smile. Sweet dreams. But we're not about to have any. You feel like you've slept for a long time. You feel a warm weight on your back, but you don't see- Oh, mystery solved then. You feel comfortable. Have we slept to the end of time? You consider getting up, but as soon as the thought enters your head, your mind fills with static and a deep sense of disapproval. Hmm? Not yet then. Okay. The cat jostled by your attempts at movement, Needs painfully at your back before settling down again and falling back asleep. You fall back into slumber too. It's night. You want to get up. Hmm. <clears throat> Paws dig into your back like a warning. 
Tomorrow then. Right. I guess this is how we die. It's morning. He'll be late for work. But the cat doesn't budge. He don't even try to get up this time. You just close your eyes and drift off again. It. It's the next day. We must really stink, huh? We haven't showered or nothing. We just went out. We've been sleeping all day. Our body odor will seep into the sheets. It's the next day. Since the last several days, or has been weeks, or longer, you're not quite sure. You're hungry. You don't know how long you've been lying down. You feel so on your back, but also on your stomach, your arms, your face, everywhere. You can't remember your last meal, the last time you drank anything. You've been sleeping all this time, but you feel exhausted, more tired than you think you've ever felt in your life. It feels like a giant hand is pressing you into the bed. You can't remember the last time you even considered moving. But somehow you know that you need to go back to sleep anyway. Everything will be fine if you just go back to sleep. Hmm? You think you're hallucinating when the cat finally stirs. It stretches languidly before hopping off your back. You hear its feet padding through the still open bedroom door, its steps fading down the hall. You don't open your eyes. You don't move. You're afraid you don't remember how. You're afraid that the static will return if you try. Static? The numbness? But eventually you do try. Up you get. You've probably atrophied. You try to prop yourself up on one arm. It's thinner than you've ever seen it. Yep, it's atrophied. Thinner than you think should be possible. Mm -hmm. The arm snaps under the weight of your body and crumbles to dust in the bed sheets. It doesn't hurt in the slightest, as if even your nerves have dried up and become as useless as, well, as useless as you feel in general. Just how long have you been lying in bed? You don't even have much time to think about it. Your failed attempt at sitting up sends you tumbling over the side of the bed like a ragdoll. Ooh, ouch. But you think you're probably closer to being a ceramic doll as your body shatters instantly upon impact with the floor. Your head rolls towards the door, letting you watch as the rest of your strewn body parts crack and crumble and turn into broken ruin as your consciousness begins to fade. Hello cat, hello, hi. The cat strolls into view then, poking and prodding at the remains of your brittle limbs. Bad kitty, you try to say. But you think your jaw might have snapped off earlier as well, almost as if sensing your attention the cat walks over to you. Well, your head at least. And you watch with your final conscious seconds as it lies down, curling its body around you. It feels warm. Well, maybe another nap couldn't hurt. Ending 6, just a cat nap. Uh, mystery food time. Dot. Is this really a good idea? Uh, fine. I guess if this is what you want. You open the container and... You just barely manage to keep from throwing up, but just barely. The stench is overwhelming. Cough gulp. Yeah, yeah, give me a minute. You hazard a look at the contents of the container, but... Hmm? You honestly can't understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Everything is just... mashed together. What exactly everything consists of is a mystery you're more than happy to keep unsolved. Different shapes, different sizes, different textures. Not the color though. All of it is the same color. The most unfortunate looking shade of grey you've ever seen. Tinted with a nauseatingly wet green film over the top. Am, uh, am I supposed to warm it up or? You don't really know how to serve it. Any utensil or plate that touches it gets thrown out immediately. No exceptions. Your hands are going to be scrubbed with soap and hot water to within an inch of their lives after this. You decide against putting this crap in your microwave. You doubt it would taste or smell any better warm. Not wanting to hold it anymore, you shake your head and practically toss the container next to the cat on the counter. <coughs> well, eat up cat. Hopefully you die of food poisoning. The cat enthusiastically dies for the toxic looking sludge, sniffing it as if savoring the scent. You turn to the fridge and close it. Dot, you've lost your appetite. You're about to head to the bathroom to wash your hands for the next hour or so when... 
Mm-hmm. Ow! A sharp pain in your foot causes you to stumble. You catch yourself in the kitchen sink and look down to see that the tip of your sock is... Red? Oh, as it eats the meat, we get injured. And the red is slowly spreading to the rest of your sock. Are you bleeding? You quickly reach down and pull off your sock to see the damage. Hmm? Oh, we're missing a toe. Your middle toe is... gone. It's just gone. Just a stump is left in its place, steadily leaking blood onto the floor. Uh, uh. You clumsily step back as if it would help you get away from what you're seeing. The blood trail simply follows your movement. 911. You have to call 911. Phone, where's the- But it's dead. Your phone's dead. Cough, cough, cough. Goggle. What? Your tongue is... What? Have... Abenin. Oh, Abenin. What's happening to me? You slowly look over to find the cat still eating, completely unbothered by his suffering. Munch, munch, munch. Not bothered to try and stop the blood from dribbling out of your mouth, you keep watching in days as the cat happily chews at a gross piece of... Tongue? Wait, that's... You look more closely at the mystery food in the cat's drawers. It looks vaguely familiar. It looks like a tongue. I'm right. Uh, munch, gulp. Meow, after you too, you stupid cat. Before you can even think to do anything to stop it, the cat dives into the container again and bites into a piece that looks kind of like a... Ah, ugh. You collapse to the floor, clutching your torso. It bit our stomach? You ride around on the blood-stained tiles, crying. Something. Something inside you just... Bleh. Blood pours out from deep within you. Whatever that was, felt important. And now it's probably gone, too. It hurts. It hurts so much. Stop. Please. You weakly try to reach up to the cat on the counter above you. Your vision blurs from the effort, from the pain, from your tears, from... Ugh. Uh. Your eyes. Your eyes. You fall limply back to the floor. You're leaking blood all over. From all over. Your foot, your mouth, your insides, your eye sockets. You can feel your life fading away too. That's fine. If it means not feeling the pain of losing another part of you, then... Hopefully the cat will take its time eating your eyeballs. And give you time. To just, just, hmm. Ending 10, you are what you eat. Just, just what though? It's actually the first time I think we've seen fading text in this game. Play with the cat. Meow. Poor thing is probably bored stiff sitting in that old box all day, just watching crowds of people walking by them, ignoring them. You can't just leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socializing won't kill you, right? Oh, you just want some attention, don't you? You want to play, huh? <laughs> okay then. What to play, though? Look for some yarn. If every movie and cartoon involving cats that you've watched since childhood is to be believed, then you can deduce with almost absolute certainty that cats freaking love yarn. Probably. You unearth some from an old box in the hallway closet that's filled with knickknacks from various abandoned hobbies. Yeah, so we do have a very cluttered house, so that's where all the mess comes from. You consider just handing the ball of bright red yarn over to the cat and supervising from the side. But that would defeat the idea of playing together, wouldn't it? You cut off a decent length of string from the ball of yarn and go back to the living room. It's not asleep, but when it looks up as you enter the living room, you feel like it could doze off right there and then. You'll fix that. You smirk a little, confident with your surprise. And let the piece of yarn dangle just above the floor, pinch between your thumb and index finger. Oh, the cat seems interested. The sudden shift in the cat's demeanor makes your heart start to beat a little faster. Its posture has barely changed at all. Just a subtle shift of the head and ears. A slight tension in the shoulders, a sharpness in the gaze as it locks onto the yarn dangling an inch above the floor. The cat could still pass as being almost 
relaxed, calm. And yet the air is thick with his eagerness to lunge forward, waiting for the right moment to strike. You feel like you've just witnessed the awakening of the perfect predator. You're almost afraid of what will happen once you make the first move. Dangle it, shake it, do it, I dare you. But, but it will be you who makes the first move. You take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, and... Arr, yoink. The cat had lunged the instant you wiggled the yawn, but you're faster. It completely misses as you flick your wrist, making the yawn recoil out of its reach like a terrified snake. Having overshot the landing in its eagerness, the cat stumbles and looks around as if shocked at its failed attack. You generously click your tongue to help reorientate it. The cat whips its head around at the sound. You're slightly taken aback at the intensity of its stare on the yarn, but you persist. You wiggle the yarn again, encouragingly. And yes, maybe a little tauntingly. This time the cat anticipates the yarn's upward dodge and leaps up to swipe at it. But you're already one step ahead, puppeting the yarn to dance gracefully out of reach once more. Meow. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. It's a little condescending, but you can't seem to help it. For some reason, it feels a little good knocking the feline down a peg or two. Oh yeah, after all we've been through, it would be great to knock this feline way down. Maybe six feet down. At least it seems to be enjoying itself. You hope, anyway. Well, not for long, it's gonna freak out, get angry, and kill us. Tots, you keep going. The cat's movements have gotten more aggressive. It must be getting frustrated. You could swear it nearly took a shot at your eye that last time. It had jumped so high and erratically. You've been keeping the yarn in constant motion, afraid to slow down. Your wrist is starting to get tired. The cat doesn't seem to be losing any energy though. It's like, it's getting faster and faster. Hmm? The music is picking up. Flick. Huh. Your wrist finally cramps sharply, making you lose control of the yarn's motion as the tip of it brushes lightly against your stomach. Oh shit! It slashed our stomach. Slash. Ugh. Pain rips low across your torso. Into your torso. Bleh. Oh interesting, it's flickering. Blood pours out of your mouth. In a daze you look down and see red blooming slowly along the bottom of your shirt around the tears in the fabric. Cough, cough. Flop. Ugh. Did our intestines fall out? You watch as a long, thick rope soap. Oh my god, it really did happen. Something. Pour out from under your shirt into a bloody heap on the floor at your feet. A single red streaked rope still hangs from you, connecting you to all that mess. Your... Are... Are those your... You crumble to the ground and topple over onto your side. Your vision has gone blurry, but... Are you drinking my blood? Are, are you gonna eat my blood? You can just make out the shape of something small in the deep inky black as it walks over and inspects your... Oh god, your intestines. Before it starts to giddily roll around in the mass of your bloody insides next to you. Oh, are you enjoying yourself, cat? Are you enjoying yourself? Well, I'll have you know I have hepatitis and all sorts of other bloodborne diseases. So hopefully, just hopefully, you'll have AIDS, and maybe you'll die that way. Darkness falls over you. The cat. Sounds happy. Unsensically, you wonder where the yarn has gone, but there's really no need to worry about it. That cat seems content with the next best thing. Ending 11. At the end of your rope. Let's play with the laser pointer. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also natural hunters, sort of. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something it'll never quite understand? That sounds a little mean when you think of it like that, but it's not like the cat will know anyway. Oh, this cat will. This cat will somehow catch a laser. Ignorance is bliss, or so they say. So you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone, dreaded days of group presentations in school. You flip it on and see that even after all this time, the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming it at a mirror, hanging in the living room, so it reflects off the glass, making a little red dot appear on your knee. Meow? The cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion at you. 
When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee, like it's trying to catch the dart of red light as casually as possible. Why would you point the laser at yourself? Are you stupid? Hmm? You manage to hold back a chuckle, not that it really matters. The cat isn't paying attention to you at all, entirely focused on the light now resting on top of its paw. Hehe. <laughs> you move the light a little higher above your knee, and towards your groin where you're about to lose your pin ass. <laughs> uh. The cat reacts immediately, trying to pin the light down, but in the next second you already move it to the floor. The cat jerkily follows attempting a more energetic pounce when you shift the red dot over here, over there, and over there. But the couch, on the couch, meow. <laughs> the cat might be ignoring you, but you're certainly enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you've laughed this much. You've laughed so much, in fact, that you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp besides the couch. In its haste to get the light, the cat leaps onto the lamp, sending both of them to the ground. The lamp shatters, the glass goes everywhere, and maybe the cat cuts itself. Please. Gasp, oh my gosh. The cat is sitting in the middle of the former lamp's broken shards. Ooh, back hunched, its head whipped around back and forth as if in a panic. You quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I'm so sorry. Are, are you okay? Are you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat and check it for any injuries when... <coughs> Slash? Ow, hey! The cat swipes at you, pulls extended. It backs up and twitches away, making frantic half turns in various directions as if looking for something, or waiting for something to appear. It's looking for the laser. It wants the laser to come back. You hold the hand with the scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding, but it's not big. You're more annoyed than anything, but... <coughs> Immediately your annoyance starts to bleed into concern. Hmm? You watch in shock as the cat starts to run around tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. You consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason, you feel like that won't be a good idea. Well, the best idea was to kill the cat, but we'll be back for it later, probably, maybe. What happened to you? Is it... An idea comes to you, or rather, a realization. You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away towards the floor in the middle of the living room, thinking, hoping, that the cat would calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on the laser pointer. Hmm? The cat's reaction is immediate. Oh wow, that's quick. He screwed up. In the span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on the shredded armchair, leaps high into the air, changes in the air, and slams down on the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment, maybe even the whole building. You wonder dazedly how none of the other tenants have rushed over to complain about the noise, yet you stare at the sight in front of you. The cat has somehow grown in size, its eyes bulging and glowing, tail thrashing, teeth enlarged, bared and covered alarmingly in a bubbling froth. It's got rabies. Its giant claws rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor tiles and even below them, ravenously trying to get at the red dot. Your hands are shaking. You don't know what to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. No, the answer is to keep the red dot on the floor, so maybe it goes through the ground into the neighbor's apartment, and then bullies them. Get it away from you. You slowly back up towards the door. The light moves with you. No, just point the light. Hmm? Instinctively, you flick the light away, this way and that. The cat's stampeding after it. Good on ya. So fast. Smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in half. Too fast. Bulldozing through the wall into the hallway. A chance. You turn, intending to bolt out of the door and never come back, but in your haste you forgot something. You forgot several somethings. You forgot the laser pointer, gripped like a lifeline in your hand. Huh? You forgot the mirror. Hmm? You forget the mirror, still miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway, the laser reflecting off of it and onto us, putting a small red dot on the back of your head. 
Are you kidding me? And as you reach the door, you forget that it's locked. Phenomenal. We're dead. You don't even have the chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. It torn to shreds before you can even blink. Ending 12, targeted. Alright, we're gonna have to end that one there. We're getting pretty close, we have one option that we... still haven't really found yet, so to speak. It's still got question marks on it. So, maybe if we finish as many of the endings as possible, maybe it will unlock, but we're almost there. How many endings do we have left? Let's find out. Seven more endings. We'll get this done in the final playthrough. My name is Mayhem Star. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.